with the second part of this reaction. How WWE should have booked the invasion part two. Let's start this shit while I'm trying not to burp. And again, I'm gonna have to cut the camera in the middle of this because it's what? A 21 minute video and I got like a 20 minute camera time interval, which is just bullshit. I gotta get another camera that doesn't have that crap on there. Hello, I'm Adam from WorldComs.com and welcome to How WWE Should Have Booked, where I look back at infamous WWE missed booking opportunities and talk about how I would book them differently because I'm a smart, smart ass. Invasion, part two. Sam, a quick recap, please. First look. things first, no ECW, no alliance, just WCW versus WWF. So instead of Vince getting involved with Stone Cold, Vince's whole thing is he continues his midlife crisis. I crushed. WC. I gotta figure out how some YouTubers do this TV thing inside the thing. In the it's pretty it's cool. Jericho, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Perry Sony Stanley, Vegas, man. Like I don't know if they have that in there. Triple H said, yeah, Vin, I sort of... I tried to use Adobe Flash. When suddenly, it was confusing to me. Rock wins. Triple H loses it, goes backstage, trashes his locker room. And then finally, The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin when suddenly... Scott Hall climbs hey, the barricade, and then he's joined by Kevin Nash. Out comes big sexy Hall. Kevin they Nash. Spray WCW. Does he get to break his quad like Out usual? From the crowd. Since he's rebooking, does Kevin Nash get to uh, we break his quad? And then... Just by running. Why do we need to reach? Yeah, just by running. This video. All right. Hello. So Raw begins with Vince. Rule begins with Vince. He refuses to let anyone from the NWO in the building. He replays the clip of Eric saying, do you think we were just going to go away, Vince? He explains, Shane McMahon, his own flesh and blood, sold his share of WWF and of WCW to Eric Bischoff. Vince says, I've got it under control. That's a pretty cool invasion. Idea. Tonight we're going to have a rematch. The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWF title. You people get your rematch. He turns around, DDP's run in, bang. Hits him with a the then legs it. And this happens for the rest of the night. WCW guys ruining WWF's shit. Big names? Storm super kicks his old oh, Lance Storm. partner Chris Jericho. Booker T runs in on a Dudley's match. Billy Kidman hits Eddie Guerrero with a Euro. Oh, so everybody then. You know, it's chaos night. What's going on? Then finally, we get to the main event. And of course, the NWO run down again. They ruin the match. They beat them up three on two again. But then Triple H piles in to help The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Suddenly, it's three on three. Triple H, The Rock, and Stone Cold. That's a dream match, Nash man. And Hope. That is such and a dream match. the rest of the WCW guys run down. Booker T, DDP, Billy Kidman. Just those guys for now. Billy and Kidman. Out comes Chris Benoit. Chris out of Jones, all the guys to choose, Billy Jones, Kidman. But those guys fight for WWF. No shame in Billy Kidman. I'm just saying, why Billy Kidman? Their home. Finally, the men stand opposite each other, and JR screams, the battle lines have been drawn. The invasion By God, is JR. set. It replaces Unforgiven. And Eric Bischoff promises it's not just going to be WCW that kicks Vince's ass. He's going to kick Vince's ass. Well, not him specifically, but he challenges Vince McMahon to a street fight. Vince McMahon accepts, saying, I can't wait to paste your ass all around this ring. And Eric Bischoff says, oh, no, it's it's not me. Goldberg. Fighting. It's sort of Mr. WCW. Woo! Uh, out Flair. Flair. Because around Survivor Series time, his contract was up and he was ready to come work for the WWF anyway. Ric Flair comes out, cuts a promo on how WCW was much better than WWF, you know, citing all the old NWA days even, you know, really get that heritage in. Then finally we have Invasion, which looks like this. So, Lance Storm beats Chris Jericho for the IC title. Booker T and DDP beat the Dudleys for the Tag Team Championships. Rick Ric Flair. Flair beats Vince McMahon. And the NWO beats... That Flair is a fucking Austin. awesome card. As Triple H switches sides. Now, I know, I promise... That makes sense. ...sloppy betrayals. This is the only one Scout's on it. Because it's the only one that makes sense. Why would anyone leave WWF for WCW after WCW just ran itself into the ground? You know, it's the, the company couldn't survive by itself, so why would they chance their odds on an invading WCW? Instead, the only reason Triple H leaves is because he was being mistreated by Vince, by his family, who never delivered. Wait, put the seeds there, so buddy. Triple H says, That's pretty awesome. Do you know why I did what I did? Because you know the only wrestling family I actually have? 
The only guys who stuck with me through everything, the only guys who never let me down, it's the click. With his best buddies, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, Triple H officially joins NWO. And X officially this time. He the set. He brings the light. Not like the other time where they say he'll, he'll join, but he never did. did the cruiserweight which he was supposed to, but then from X a bunch of crap just happened. Been building ever since X Factor lost their titles. Invasions just happened, and if it's anything like the frankly, much worse invasion pay-per-view that actually happened, this will rake in serious coin, okay? The invasion pay-per-view, the bad version, rates in $10 million just by itself. So if it can get that, then I think we've got a bit more money to throw around and we can maybe buy out one more contract. And that contract- Goldberg. Goldberg. And trust me, yeah, Goldberg is expensive, so the invasion True, if you, great night to if you book him right, just not put on a fucking wig like they did, did like having gold has put a wig on him. Light heavyweight title, now the cruiserweight title, got the intercontinental title, the tag team title. Goldberg may up. suck, but if you book him right, he's Shame. worth it. We've got both of your prodigal sons right here. I've got almost... It's true, Goldberg can't wrestle for shit, but like I said, if you book him right, he'll do right. I want your company. I want everything. So he brings out Vince McMahon and says, Vince, I've got a proposition for you. You think you can beat WCW? How about this? Survivor Series, five on five elimination tag match, winner take all. The leader of the winning team, they control the WWF. So Vince McMahon is like, um, no, that's a stupid plan. <laughs> I would risk my company. And Eric says, I thought you might say that. And then suddenly Triple H turns around and pedigrees Shane McMahon. After all, they've got everything they wanted from the guy, so they punish Vince McMahon's son in front of him. And Vince, because he's slowly turning babyface, is like, uh, get your hands off my child, thanks. So Shane McMahon is left lying in the middle of the ring. Eric makes everyone else leave, makes everyone leave the ring. And then just as Shane McMahon is rising to his feet, he turns around and guess who slid in the ring? Goldberg. He's ah! here! Bam, bam. Shane's next! <laughs> Shane's Goldberg next! Spears Shane McMahon out of his trousers. And he picks him up, jackhammers him, busts him open with rights and left. Goldberg just keeps hitting him and hitting him. We had Stone Cold versus Goldberg. And says, all right, you've got your match. Just please stop murdering my son. And Eric says, thanks, Vince. Smug old grin. The final exactly. image of the night is Vince cradling his bloody boy. Baby face. You still haven't taken him to the hospital. So we've got Survivor Series. That card looks like this. Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, Chavo, Book. Oh, fuck. Hogan Hall, Nash Blair. At the end of the night, Team WCW win. It can be by shenanigans if you want. I don't think it should be because, after all, WCW will finally have established itself as a force to be reckoned with. Like bad guys that can get stuff done, which they never were. In the old invasion angle, JR and Heyman are like, What the in the hell? Is in the original easy now? What invasion you angle, tune into WCW is going to be joke Monday the, Night the, Raw? The butt of the joke on the WWF anymore. What is going to happen? The world as we know it is over. The World Wrestling Federation as we know it is over. <laughs> Next night, the fans tune in in droves to see WCW Monday. <laughs> That'd be a fucking shocker. Same old title. Out comes Eric Bischoff to open the night, and it looks just like Nitro used to look. You've got the WCW ring. Is it WCW gone and politics too, where everybody WCW gets fucked WCW over? Except for Jay Cruiserweights are the highlights of the match. And Eric Bischoff gets the big the guys just well, dumping down the shit. Oh, you're gonna see some changes around here. So Bischoff's in the ring. He brings out a battered Vince McMahon and tells him, you're fired. He announces some changes to the calendar. It's going to be Monday Nitro and Thursday Night Raw. But Bischoff tells the fans why, not to worry. He's not going to Why not Thunder? Everything. Thursday Night Thunder. You know, he's going to let JR and Heyman still call the action on commentary. But then he says to Heyman... Tony Schiavone. I like your moxie, kid. You're doing a good job. Tell you what, I'm going to double your pay. I'm going to give you twice as much as JR has because you know what? I value you. So Heyman basically turns heel commentator and starts siding with WCW for every Because <laughs> money talks. Match. Because let's be honest, heel Heyman is much, much, much better than Faith Lawler. 
Yep. I love Jerry the King Lawler to bits, but ever since he turned face, it never quite worked. He didn't have that spark back. You can bring Jerry Lawler back, absolutely, but just have him be an on-air personality. He can be a manager. He'd be a great heel manager. So we keep JR and Heyman on commentary. And I'm going to stop it here for you know why, so I'll be back. I wonder if I should call a hooker tonight. Oh, hello there. Nice to see you there. Anyways, let's start this shit. Well, it doesn't just change there because, like, I'm not going to fire anyone, guys. That's not the way Eric Bischoff does business. I'm a smart businessman, okay? Look, yeah, I fired Vince, but I'm not going to fire any of the WWF superstars. That's just bad for business. They're just going to go to my competitors. The WWF guys, you can stay. You're probably going to have a bad time, but everyone can stay. Because after all, Uncle Eric's here to make the company better. Where's Ted Turner's money? Better. He announces that he has the power to cancel Armageddon, and instead he books in Starcade. WCW's answer to WrestleMania, and he says it's going to be the most stacked card you can possibly imagine. I'm going to book you the best matches, because after all, I'm better in charge. Goldberg will punish the Giant. He refuses to call him the Big Show, he only calls him the Giant. Angle versus Flair, clean living and integrity versus the dirtiest player in the game. Now you've got The Rock going up against Hulk Hogan, and you've got Stone Cold Steve Austin defending the WWF title against Kevin Nash. See everybody? Why? Hard. Uncle Eric cares. Smuggled. Does so it really the Kevin Nash versus Austin? Arcade, and Uncle Eric says that he cares, but it's clearly obvious from the way he books things that he's favoring the WCW guys. He waits every Does Kevin Nash break his quad in that match? ...against their favor. He repeatedly goes against not just WWF guys, but ex-WCW guys like Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, The Big Show, all the guys who left him, and he's basically running amok. So a few weeks before Starcade, he stands in the middle of the ring and says, no force on earth can stop this invasion, no man alive. Lights go out. Undertaker. Then we see the Titantron, some creepy images of graves and smoke and the moon and three little girls or something like that. <laughs> Undertaker. And then the creepy voice says, He's back. <laughs> Gong. Out comes the Undertaker, led by Paul Bearer. Oh, um, he is. Dead man persona. And JR bigs it up. He is the spirit of the WWF. He has returned to haunt WCW. Undertaker grabs Eric and hits him with a two-stone pile driver. Next week, the final show before Starcade, Eric realizes, yeah, he can't beat The Undertaker by himself, so instead, he needs to bring in a similar creature of the night. He brings Sting? in... Sting? Sting. Uh. Now, I know, uh, I know we have a lot of problems with Sting, because Sting refused to come to the company because of the way they treated WCW guys. But seeing as this is a less ego-driven angle than the invasion... And it's of your book, so yeah. ...and coax him over to the WWF. So Sting comes out in eerie darkness, out comes The Undertaker, Sting points the bat at The Undertaker, Undertaker cuts his throat. That's the final image before Starcade, the card of which looks like this. Goldberg beats The Big Show, Angle beats Flair, The Rock beats Hogan, The Undertaker beats Sting, and Kevin Nash, with Scott Hall's help, beats Stone Cold Steve Austin. We have a new oh, he doesn't bring his squad. Austin celebrates this by Stone Cold stunnering everyone in the building. Stone Cold goes up against the entire NWO, beating on all of them. The next pay-per-view is sold out. That's right, the Royal Rumble is cancelled. Oh, come Boom. on. Nuclear heat on Uncle Eric, who thinks, hey, I'm just doing what I think is best for business, guys. Austin's going up against the entire NWO, so the match is made. Austin versus Scott Hall versus Kevin Nash versus Hulk Hogan, a fatal four-way for the WWF Championship, and sold out. Meanwhile, Undertaker sets his sight on Triple H for betraying the company. After all, The Undertaker is the biggest company man of them all. And the dirtiest player in the game, Ric Flair, challenges the most electrifying man in sports entertainment, The Rock, to see who can be the most charismatic man in the history of wrestling. That'd be a great match. Sold out. The card looks like this. Sting beats Kurt Angle, Triple H beats The Undertaker, Ric Flair beats The Rock. Goldberg versus Edge, Hogan really? pins Nash after Austin stunners him, beginning dissension in the NWO. The Click and the NWO are infighting amongst themselves whilst Hogan defends his actions in winning the WWF title. The Rock comes out and says, WCW may have won the battle, but they have not won the war. There's still a war going on between WWF and WCW, and a war needs a very special kind of match. A war needs 
War Games. No. So we've got the four oh, wait, team, no. team WWF, The Rock. I'm thinking of the three ring battle royal, never mind. Angle versus a team of Hogan's choosing, and because of all this infighting, Hogan doesn't pick. That is the one ring. And Kevin Nash. Instead, the team is Hulk Hogan, Triple H, Booker T, and DDP. That all goes down, not at No Way Out, but at Super Brawl, and the card looks like this. So the War Games match ends with Team WWF finally victorious. They finally win a big one. Everyone's in the ring, and then suddenly the four WWF guys lock in four submissions on Team WCW at the same time. Austin has Hogan in a million dollar dream. The Rock has Booker T in a sharpshooter. The Undertaker has a triangle choke on Triple H, and Kurt Angle it's mass anarchy. on DDP. DDP is the first one to say he gives up Team WWF conquer at war games. The click are getting worse and worse. They're still in fighting. So Triple H brings in the daddy of the clicks to sort it out. He brings in next night on Raw, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. He wants Shawn Michaels to get everyone around and sing Kumbaya, but they refuse. And in fact, Michaels reprimands them. He reprimands Hall, Nash, and Triple H. He says, you guys left. You guys turned your back on the WWF. This was your home. These were the people that made you. What's wrong with you? Coming from Shawn Michaels, really? Yeah, because Shawn Michaels wanted to leave, but Vince wouldn't well, let him. Uh, to propose a counter argument. In real life, I'm just saying. Agrees him. He wants Hall, Nash, and X Park to help him beat up Shawn Michaels, but they refuse because look at us. What's happening here? Hall, Nash, and X Park leave the ring. NWO disband, and Triple H says, "Go then." For the twentieth time. I'm one of the WCW's biggest stars. He turns around into a super kick from Shawn Michaels. So things are going very bad for Eric Bischoff. NWO has disbanded. Hogan is basically playing his own game. A lot of titles have gone back to WWF, and the WWF kicked ass at Super Bowl. He screams, I am in charge. I will have order. I am in charge. Then suddenly, no chance. Success with your gut. What a chish, cup of cheap, foof stall. Pity about a kick about the stud. Vince McMahon. He comes out with his swagger and says, Guess who's back? Vince takes a microphone and says, did you really think I was gonna go away, Eric? Turns out that Linda McMahon, Stephanie McMahon- You forgot about them, yeah. You forgot about it. Eric forgot about Vince those guys. In order to bring him back. And they join him in the entrance round. Finally, the McMahons are united. All four of them, the owners of the WWF, they are the WWF family. They walk down to the ring. Vince says, you can beat McMahon down, but you cannot kill a McMahon. From behind them out comes every WWF guy that Eric has ever mistreated and they have <laughs> the barrier making sure that no WCW guys Eric's gonna and die. The McMahon's come down and they kick Eric Bischoff's ass. They kick his ass long enough until he agrees to put the company back on the line. It's all gonna come really? to head. Really? To get your way just beat the shit out of someone and until they Bischoff sort of say they'll do it. Look, I mean we made a huge deal with the venue. Hey the mob did it anyway so it works. We have to do Wrestlemania. So the company is- Mob mentality, man. There are 11 matches booked, and whoever gets the most wins the company. The last night before WrestleMania, the last Raw, the main event is an epic shoot promo between Eric Bischoff and Vince McMahon. They go- I hate you, Vince. And they just unleash everything. All of the horrible things that they did to each other in the Monday Night Wars, Eric's shady business practices, Vince keeping young stars down, they unleash on each other, like Paul Heyman did on Vince McMahon. It is a shoot- Taz! Look at Taz! Line <laughs> yeah, he just went off on so Taz. Finally, we have he was something, now he's nothing! Like this. Edge wins a 20-man battle royale for immunity. We have a WWF guy win that in order to be a red herring. Jeff Hardy wins the Cruiserweight title, now the light heavyweight title again, from X Park in a fatal four way. Billy Kidman was the European title. <laughs> Rick Flair. Kidman, I like to see the European title. Booker T and DDP beat the Dudleys in a two out of three falls match. Vince McMahon beats Eric Bischoff. The Outsiders retain their tag team titles versus Big Show and Kane. Shawn Michaels beats Triple H in a no holds barred match. The Undertaker beats Goldberg in a streak versus that, streak Goldberg match. is an Undertaker. Sting beats That'd be amazing. Icon versus Icon match. And it's capped off with Legend versus Legend. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Hulk Hogan. And everything's tied up. Five to five. It all comes down to Hulk Hogan versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, both faces of their generation, both faces of their company. In the middle of what the round, Stone Cold hits a stunner. One, two, three. He beats Hulk Hogan, regains the WWF Championship, and WWF win back control of the company. And oh, Russell, 18 no swerves. Tune in tomorrow 
for Monday Night Raw. And it begins with an address from Vince McMahon, and he calls out Eric Bischoff. And he says, look, over the last... You're year, fired! Me, and it's fine, I understand. Business is business. But you didn't fire any of my guys. You know what? I respect that. I respect that head for business. So I'm not going to fire any of your guys. He says, Except together, you. we're going to make the WWF the strongest wrestling company it can be. The best of WWE and the best of WCW. He and Bischoff shake hands. The handshake that ends the Monday Night Raw. And he fires and he us? swerves everyone by making Eric Bischoff the general manager. Because as Vince says, <laughs> he'd rather have a son of a bitch working for True. him than working against him. And Eric looks down the camera and smiles that smug old grin. So guys, it takes uh, a son of a bitch guys, to know a son of a bitch. Well, Adam, against all the meager odds I threw at you, you still managed to persevere and push back the wrestling with regret invasion. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe that I, an outsider, lost this confrontation that you yourself helped put together. Why does this all sound so familiar? But you know what? This isn't over. That awkward moment when your invasion angle flops harder than a fat chick at the beach. Okay, and what about you guys at home? Did I book it better, or did I just bring in established names to help artificially raise the stakes and sugarcoat we book? Well, both. Let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and make sure you follow Brian Zane from Wrestling With Regret and Grim from Grimm's Toy Show. Huge thanks to those guys for helping out. And you can follow everyone on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com. Happy New Year. We'll see you soon. So yeah, here's a booking. I say it worked for both angles, like just like booking it better and also bringing in gate and games. What the fuck? Bringing in big names to establish the invasion which they needed in the first place. Because you gotta admit, the original angle, they needed fucking big names. Like, what did they have? Booker T and Diamond Dallas Page. DDP did nothing there. He was basically a stalker from day one. And Booker T was just the guy that everybody kicked his ass. And he became five times WCW champion for no reason. And he's going on for years saying, oh, I'm the five time WCW champion. Well, the last two reigns of yours weren't that great, just saying. Like I said, those were the only two big names they had. Like, other people they had were like, uh, what the fuck? Lance Storm, he was talented, but really not a big name. Billy Kidman, Gregory Helms, which they called Sugar Shane Helms, and became the Hurricane after, which was complete fucking bullshit. They had Mark Dindrag in there, which you haven't used him until, like, later on when he joined Kurt Angle's team years later. And he joined Garrison Cade, who became Lance Cade, who died later. And then there was a signings that they never used, like Kazayashi was signed, but they never used him. Buff Bagwell was used once, but how, like, is basically, like, he fucked himself over of all his bullshit, and I think the final nail in the coffin was, like, he got his mom to call in sick for him for the company. Yes, that happened. Look it up. Buff Bagwell got his mom to call in for work to say that he was not coming in because he was sick. Way to go, Buff Bagwell. And now Buff Bagwell is basically a gigolo on TV. Yes, that's happening. Look it up. And who else did they have? Oh, God. They had so many little names. Like, they had some cool things going on. They had Tajiri, which did the, was the only Japanese wrestler that actually did anything in WWF. Um, they had guys that were... I don't know why they didn't join the ECW. They had Jerry and Lynn there, but they never used them. They had Tajiri. Never went to ECW's side. Spike Dudley. Of course, he was feeding with the Dudley boys, but... Everybody from ECW was feeding with each other, but they joined in one. But for some reason, Spike wasn't allowed. That's weird. But yeah. And I remember so many fans booking better matches on the forums, like... Back in no DQ, when it was actually awesome to go there, there was forums, like, topics on, like, book your fantasy invasion angle before even Survivor Series started to happen, because we heard, like, the... F yeah, everybody had their own thing going on, and we... Uh, everybody read them. I don't think everybody read them, but... I'm just saying, everybody's own booking storyline was way better than what WWE produced. Hell, I did one that was more like pretty awesome, like this one. 
like at almost to the point where Adam was saying, because like I think we all think alike about what we wanted to do, like save it up and all that shit. But yeah, in the end, the WWE fucked over the biggest money maker storyline of all time. Got fucked over big time, and they could have gotten all these big names later on because they could afford it because they're WWE. They make a lot of fucking coin. But yeah, that's just my opinions. What are your guys' opinions? Take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid Freak Out. Bye.